Man, there is so much I want to talk about in this video. This is one of those reviews. I, I just have to accept the fact that it's never going to feel complete. It's just going to get uploaded. Also letting you know there's going to be a spoiler-free review for the Spider-Man 2 game. I will talk about, you know, what villains are in it. Things that you've seen in the promotional material. Also in a world where Insomniac Games came out and told the world who Venom is not before the game even came out. I'll talk about who Venom is not. But I'm not going to tell you who Venom is because I feel like that's a reveal you're supposed to experience as the story goes on. Maybe you find it obvious, I don't know, but in a world where I gotta talk about Venom here, I'd rather err on the side of caution with that. Alright, here we go. So Spider-Man 2 is Insomniac's PS5 exclusive, very successful sequel to the very successful Spider-Man. You have Peter Parker as Spider-Man, Miles Morales as Spider-Man, you get to play as both. Kraven the Hunter comes to New York for the good hunt. Peter Parker gets the symbiote suit and everything that leads to. New York is bigger than it was before. Once again, you do feel like you are New York's protector no matter who you are as Spider-Man. That's one of the things I liked. On the fly, you can swap between Peter Parker or Miles Morales. Some of the side missions are specific to one Spider-Man or the other, but when you're generally going through the city taking down criminals, you can pick whoever you want. That's awesome that they know. There are fans of both. People want to be who they want to be. And I felt this game did a really good job at balancing the importance of the spider man Would have been easy to be like, yeah, sequel to Peter Parker's story. And the DLC guy. I know he's not DLC, got his own game. I'm just saying it could have felt like that, but this does feel like a team effort. Miles has some great story arcs just for him personally. Plus, when you as Peter get the symbiote suit, it's you know, what you know about the symbiote suit. Feels really cool at first, and then it becomes a problem because Peter Parker becomes an asshole. I like the fact that even when Peter is an asshole, you still play as him. It can be immersion breaking. I felt like I was supposed to do some of the side missions before I went on with the story. So the story, Peter's becoming much more hardcore and then I'll go and take out a bunch of criminals and he's like, hey, just doing my job, New York. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Also, the blood, the slaughter. He doesn't say that. But you know what I mean. So I like that you get to play as more hardcore Spider-Man. Also, you get to see it through the eyes of Miles Morales, which is my friend he's changing and I feel like he's in trouble. It balanced the themes. You have villains that play off of the themes in the game. Like you take the lizard. Dr. Connors is a victim of the lizard. He's essentially a hostage of the lizard when the lizard is out. As Peter Parker is a hostage of the symbiote suit, though he doesn't quite know it yet. Also, the dude, I got it. The dialogue when I was fighting the lizard was epic. Cause your symbiote suit Spider-Man starts becoming a bit more of a dick and I'm fighting the lizard. And he's like, no wonder your family left you. I was like, Low blow, dude. But in order to traverse this more enormous New York, you now have new abilities, namely the web gliders. You can glide around like you're Batman or some shit. You got some good updrafts to keep you in the air. Some jet streams you can find to make it faster. Cause there were moments where I was like, is gliding truly faster than web swinging? You find one of those jet streams, the answer is a resounding yes. Also at a point, fast travel unlocks. It does it per section. You have to do enough missions in any given section and then fast travel unlocks for that section. And fast travels, Awesome. It just, it looks cool. You can aim the cursor at any point on the map in a section you have unlocked fast travel for. Hold that button down, the map becomes reality, and in you go. In terms of gameplay, the fighting, very familiar to what you know from the previous Spider-Man game. The combos are very familiar. I will say this game, in terms of combat, was much easier than the previous Spider-Man game. It's probably because they inundate you with so many tech and special abilities, you essentially have eight that you can do. Even if you run into one of the big guys, it's supposed to be a big problem. You can hit him with one of your tech abilities, that'll stun him, you start comboing him, he snaps out of it, you hit him with another one, you start comboing him. Rinse and repeat, and at a point you figure that out, they cease to really be a problem. But also in terms of just the general multitasking, I felt the first Spider-Man game had a lot more you had to keep your your head on a swivel for a lot more enemies with rocket launchers if i'm stacking it up taking out a base in spider-man was much more difficult than taking out a base in spider-man 2. you have a myriad of side missions in here you have the sciencey things it's no longer a 2d puzzle i like puzzle mechanic side missions i just do give me those bioshock one puzzles all day long i just get a kick out of them this one the puzzles are far easier but you do have puzzles nonetheless i feel like that's a big theme in spider-man 2 in every real sense I can think of, the game 
is easier. Fighting groups of enemies is easier, the bosses are easier, the puzzles are easier, the platinum trophy itself is easier. But for the side missions, some are fun, some are lame. I have myself to blame, I just wasn't connecting with the whole Miles Morales helping his high school out. So I finished those missions up when the shit was hitting the fan and I was like, oh, by the way, let me help you with those yearbook photos. You do it and they're like, oh, by the way, uh, can you take three more pictures? Oh, by the way, when you're done with that, can you just swing around the school? Presumptuous dicks, but I helped them out. Did it because I need that platinum trophy. And you do have missions where you play as Mary Jane in here. Yes, you remember Spider-Man 1, those MJ missions that just ground the momentum of the game to a halt. There are missions in Spider-Man 2 where you play as Mary Jane. I will say though, the gameplay, much more engaging and exciting. Not saying I buy the fact of Mary Jane Watson sneaking up on and taking out a squad of Craven's hunters. Don't give me that I'm being sexist shit. You know it doesn't make a lot of sense. Most people wouldn't be able to do that. That's my point. I was going through that thing like I was Rorschach or some shit. What do you seem to understand? I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me! I will reiterate though, the MJ gameplay, much more fun this time around. And I'll take fun over sneaking around Slogfest. One of the new and absurdly fun abilities you get in this game is the ability to make this little web high wire you can walk out on. Take enemies out from above via stealth. But you can also like aim it up and create web ramp high wires and Dude, by the end, I was just looking around, I'm like, this looks like a spider layer. It's not like the Arkham games. The Arkham games, people, you get spotted and they're shooting at you. You go across a couple gargoyles, people are like, oh, I, where you go? He's right here. I, it was like he was here and then he, he went that way and he just became invisible. Spider-Man's like, no, I saw you. I could see you doing that too. What are you doing? It's not as easy to escape. I found that fun. That makes the stealth kills more gratifying and fulfilling when you pull them off. When you clear out a whole room, you just feel badass. But the villains, man, I gotta tell you this, I feel really bad for Aaron Taylor Johnson at this point because what you get in here is Craven Prime. Craven's great in here. First of all, he's coming to New York to hunt Spider-Man's enemies because he's like, that's the real game right there. He's this apex predator who lives for the hunt. Spider-Man has some very hunt-worthy villains out there. I stress villains because that was such a cool part of this game. You have to protect your enemies from another enemy because Spider-Man's like, I'm not about killing people unless Jeremy's playing as Spider-Man. I heard that you can go around the building and you see them webbed to the building. That broke my heart. All right, fine. I'll save my bloodlust for the Wolverine game, whatever. But you don't just get Craven. It's not like he's this guy who comes into the city. I mean, he is, but it's the Craven culture you get. You really feel like this guy's entire life and sense of being is all about the hunt. In a very primal sense, you get it, you understand it, and that's so cool. Also the symbiote suit, the symbiote suit is in and of itself its own story it's dealing with, also a villain. A villain posing as a friend, there's so much cool power to be had by wearing the symbiote suit, but my God, they do such a great job at illustrating that this suit is a parasite. It's not a symbiotic relationship, it's a parasitic relationship. It's taking far more than it gives. It gives you the illusion of getting something, but in the end, you are simply a host for its will. That's always been the story of the symbiote suit, but when you have hours of gameplay fleshing this out, it just hits different, it hits deeper. I even love the aesthetic of the suit, where you look a little deeper and you can tell it's moving a little bit. It is a living epidermis. And then at a point, Peter really starts losing himself to this thing and it just looks like a straight up alien skin. I just got a deeper sense of how one loses themselves to this parasite via the alteration of their brain chemistry. It's wild how at the whim of our brain chemistry we are. This game actually doesn't scientifically go into it like this, but in terms of what I could see through the characters, that's really how it landed with me. Where it's more than you just become an asshole version of yourself who creates memes for the rest of the internet's life. I mean, 90s me was all about Venom, the symbiote suit. It's what I lived for in Spider-Man back when. So I've seen more than a few iterations of this. I just felt this one was a very clear picture of what this thing's doing to him. For my life of Spider-Man fandom, I've always been like, yeah, but man, if I got that symbiote suit, that'd be awesome. Be like Eddie Brock being like, no, you're gonna listen to me and we're gonna be anti-heroes. You get the sense that that's really not how this works here. That is a delusion. It'll make you think so it can just kind of take you over. As for Venom, yes, Venom is also in the game as Insomniac said, 
Eddie Brock is not Venom in this game. What the hell, I will be honest with you. The arc they have for Venom is actually a really good one. Man, Venom is aggressive in this game. That's when the shit really starts hitting the fan. So when all that stuff I said before about like, oh yeah, the fights are easy, well, I mean, it's still easy. But it does crank up the intensity at a point in the game. There was actually a scene with Venom that very much reminded me of the Hulk in the Avengers movie. Angry and bloodthirsty, more importantly, angry at you. Also, Tony Todd as Venom, <laughs> come on. We're going to kill the world. That's a layup, that's God tier. I will say if there are fundamentalists out there who are like, no, Eddie Brock needs to be Venom, he's probably gonna bother you. But I actually, I do get, I have my weird <laughs> boomer energy gripes for this game. Like everyone in Miles Morales' life and Peter Parker's life all know that they are the Spider-Mans. They don't need to hide it from their friends and loved ones. It's not like the world knows, but they're friends, they know. In terms of fundamental lessons of life, I mean, there's a good argument to be like, yeah, open communication with your friends. That's a healthy thing. I wouldn't be surprised if that was exactly the conversation and the reason. That said, if I were a superhero, I wouldn't tell anybody. Just saying. But it has officially been 15 years since Iron Man mainstreamed the idea of not hiding behind the mask. That is to say, a child who was born when Tony Stark ended his film with I am Iron Man, telling the world who he was. This will differ depending on state or country, but if we're looking at about 15 years, that child born will be able to get a learner's permit to drive a car. It's been some time. So I feel like anyone between the ages of one and 30 are not gonna give a fuck. But when I see it, I'm like, oh, I miss that. It's a fundamental thing of the superhero's journey in his life. Look in the end, Spider-Man 2, it's great. But what you really wanna know is, is it better than the first game? It is bigger than the first game, no doubt. That's not even a question. Better? Not for me. I feel like that's a hot take, but I felt the first game was just in the zone 100% of the time. Except the MJ side quest. This definitely has it over one there, no doubt. First game was more challenging on every level where you really feel it are the fight scenarios. I just felt the first Spider-Man game forced me to change up my tactics more than two. Two for most of the game, launch the enemy in the air, either with an uppercut or a web swing kick, then juggle them in the air with air combat, and when you knock them out, hold triangle, web the next person, pull them up into the air, air combat them. There were battles, there were fights in this game, my feet never touched the ground. If an enemy's too big to web into the air, don't worry, you have a lot of tech to dispatch that enemy with. Also a lot of tech to take out the bosses with. However, they're telling a very complex and personal story in Spider-Man 2. Not that the first one didn't have that really personal story between Peter and Doc Ock and Fuck it. I was in tears by the end. But whereas in the final act of these games, it gets bigger. I felt in Spider-Man 2, it got too big. I was like, I don't require that. This game, like the last, was at its best when it was really hammering home that more personal story. And that story in here, the story of Peter Parker and the power you feel with the symbiote suit, and then the damaging presence in Peter's life it becomes all the while you're Miles Morales seeing your friend go through this. Spider-Man 2 deserves all the props for existing in a world in which these Spider-Man stories for both heroes and villains have been told many times over, over the course of decades. So they go a different direction with these stories for the sake of them feeling new, but they also do the characters and their arcs justice. That for me is the gold and that's what makes it worth buying at full price. Which is funny because full price is more now, game prices are going up, physical media is going away. I gotta rethink the structure of my entire rating system. All right, so Spider-Man 2, have you played it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. Also, spoiler warning for the comment section, if you haven't played the game, you should probably steer clear of that. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.